Greetings! This is Sean Bagshaw, one of the members of the Photo Cascadia team. In this video tutorial, I'm going to be talking about dodging and burning in Photoshop. Another way to think about dodging and burning is lightening or darkening certain areas of the image. One of the Photo Cascadia readers recently sent us a question about dodging and burning. David writes, I have been dodging and burning on a gray layer set to the overlay blending mode using dodge and burn tools for years. I use highlights, midtones, and shadow settings to dodge and burn corresponding areas with the dodge and burn tools. What is the difference between using the dodge and burn tools on an overlay layer versus using the paintbrush set to either black or white? Is one better than the other? And does one method have more control than the other? Well, that's a great question, David, and one that I think a lot of people have a misunderstanding about. Let's take a quick look at the dodge and burn tools to find out how they were intended to be used. The dodge and burn tools are located right here in the toolbox. This is the dodge tool and this is the burn tool. Dodging is lightning, burning is darkening. Let's select the burn tool. Now one of the features of the dodge and burn tools is that you can set the tonal range that the dodging or burning is going to have an effect on. So midtones, shadows, or highlights. In this case, let's darken midtones. With the background layer of this image selected, if I now paint with that burn tool across this area of the image, you can see that I am darkening, but I am darkening the midtones, but not the brightest highlights and not the deepest shadows. Okay, so that's a great effect. And it's nice to be able to target those midtones. If I further wanted to darken just shadows or highlights, I could select that as well. Let's say I want to do some lightning or some dodging. So I can choose the dodge tool. And let's say I want to dodge the highlights. I'm going to do it to a lesser degree. So I'm going to turn the exposure down. And now as I sweep that across, you can see that those brightest areas of the water and those yellow leaves are becoming brighter. That's great. And that works excellent as long as you have the actual pixels of the image to be working on. That's what's required for those dodge and burn tools to be able to identify where the highlights, midtones, and shadow areas are and where to have their effect. The problem with this is, is that this creates a destructive workflow technique. And what I mean by destructive workflow is that as soon as you've done these dodging and burning techniques to the actual pixels of that image, and then you save this image, there's no way to undo those adjustments in a future time. If you decide that you overdid it or you want to adjust it or modify it later on, you can't. Any permanent pixel adjustments or alterations like that now are permanently cooked in to the pixel structure of that image. Some people say, well, you could do it on a separate layer, a copy of the background layer. And it's true, you could, and that would at least enable you to delete that uh, copy of the background layer that you had dodged and burned on and then start over but you're having to start over from the very beginning so that's not a true flexible non-destructive workflow so let me back up back to the beginning let's talk about the technique that David is referring to in which he's dodging and burning instead of on an actual pixel layer he's dodging and burning on a gray layer set to the overlay blending mode and here's how we create that layer we go to the layer uh, menu we select new layer and we get this dialog box now in this layer we're going to be dodging and burning so we can call it the dodge and burn layer and we want to set the uh, the blending mode to overlay and when we set that blending mode we get this checkbox that says fill overlay with 50 percent gray we'll check that and that's what will happen and when we say OK over here in our layers uh, panel we'll see that we've added that dodge burn gray layer set to the overlay blending mode and as you can see it's having no effect on the image at all that's because when you set a blending mode to something that's 50 percent gray it blends transparently and the only time it has an effect is if it becomes any part of that layer becomes darker than 50 percent gray it will darken the image below it or any part of that layer that becomes lighter than 50% gray will lighten the layer below it. So we can use this to dodge and burn. So here is the burn tool and I'm going to burn, uh, I'm going to set actually yep, midtones. I'm going to burn on this layer but I'm not burning on the pixels so I'm not permanently changing the pixels of this image. I'm burning on that transparent or overlay 
50% gray layer. And so this adjustment now is completely removable or reversible, or I can you know modify that adjustment any time in the future. So it's non-destructive. I haven't altered the pixels of my actual image. The problem though is that I didn't target just midtones. I actually darkened highlights and shadows an equal uh, amount as I did my midtones. Now why is that? Because I have my burn tool set to midtones. Why did I darken everything? Well the reason is is that I'm actually not burning the pixels. I'm burning 50% gray. And since this is an even 50% gray layer, everything got burned an even amount. So that's functioning a little differently than how the dodge and burn tools were intended to be used on an actual pixel layer. And is that any different than using a black and white brush tool? Well, not much. I mean, there are slight differences, but essentially it's going to be creating the same effect. So let's turn off this dodge and burn layer and create a new dodge and burn layer. So I'm going to call this one uh, dodge and burn 2. And again, it's going to be an overlay blending mode filled with 50% gray. And here it is. And now instead of using the burn tool, I'm going to use the uh, paintbrush set to black and a lower opacity because that's the main difference between using a brush and the burn tool is how quickly you add burning or darkening uh, to that, to that uh, gray layer. But now you can see that in doing this, I'm having the same effect with the paintbrush that I did with the burn tool. And in fact, if we go and look at that gray burn, dodge burn layer, you can see that that looks very similar to that. Okay, this is the one that I used the, the burn tool. This is the one where I used a black paintbrush. Essentially, it's the same thing. And the overall effect is essentially the same. So there's really no advantage to using one or the other since they essentially create the same effect. Then you might say, well, what if I do want to just dodge or burn certain tonal ranges within the image? I want to target my midtones or my highlights or my shadows, but I want to do it non-destructively in a separate non-pixel containing layer as opposed to doing it destructively directly to the pixels of the image. Is there a way to do that? Well, yes, there is. Uh, using channels and channel selections, you can create selections that target highlights, midtones, and shadows within the image. And using those selections, you can then dodge and burn on your 50% uh, gray layer through those selections to dodge and burn specific tonal ranges. Now that is a topic for uh, a much more in-depth tutorial. Uh, if you want to learn more about that, you can check out my video tutorials on my website, OutdoorExposurePhoto.com, in my exposure blending or my extended dynamic range uh, video tutorials. Or you can also go to Tony Kuyper's website at uh, goodlight.us. And Tony Kuyper has actions and written explanations of how to do what he calls luminosity painting using channel selections. And it's basically dodging and burning through those channel selections or luminosity selections. But just to give you a quick idea of what that looks like, I'm going to use Tony's actions here. And I am going to select, or I'm going to make a selection of just deep shadows here and I click on the action which creates this deep shadow uh, channel which I can click on and make the selection active and I'm gonna do a control or command H to hide those marching ants but the selection is still there and now as you see when I use my brush set to white I'm gonna try to lighten these shadows these shadow areas of the rocks by dodging them so when I do this you can see I'm lightening those shadowed areas and I can do it up in the trees and any place else where I think I have deep shadows to try to bring those deep shadows out and what does that look like well I'm going to uh, unhide the selection and deselect to get rid of the selection and then let's look at that dodge burn layer you can see the difference here when I was just burning without a selection everything burned evenly
Here, when I was dodging through that selection, you can see that the lightest areas are being dodged the most and the darkest areas are not being dodged at all. So I'm really just targeting those deepest shadow areas of the image in a way that matches pixel for pixel. And that is how you can target specific tones or tonal ranges within an image with non-destructive dodging and burning. If you're interested in learning more about that, like I said, I'd encourage you to check out my videos on extending dynamic range or check out Tony's website and his written tutorials and actions. Uh, luminosity painting is the, the term that, that Tony uses for it. Also, you might want to check out Zach Schnepp's uh, videos. He's a Photocascadia team member where he talks about not this exact technique, but how to create channel selections. And also Chip Phillips does a good job of talking about this technique uh, and other techniques that get you to the same place. Well, I hope that's been helpful and I hope I've cleared up some misunderstandings about uh, how dodging and burning or lightening and darkening works in Photoshop using uh, some different techniques. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. You can always contact me through my website, OutdoorExposurePhoto.com, or at the Photocascadia website. Thank you very much, and have a great day.